Can you explain what would change on each of the three financial statements if you purchased a piece of equipment? Or what about if you changed the allowance for doubtful accounts? I regularly ask my friends that work for or manage hedge funds and private equity funds what it is they look for most in an analyst as it relates to the financial modeling skill set. And what I hear most frequently is the ability to really understand how cash is created and consumed by a business. More concisely, an ideal candidate understands how a particular transaction impacts all three financial statements and can describe the effect on cash flow. The ability to build financial models is a great skill set, but the ability to sustain this mental framework and think through all of these changes without having to reference a financial model should be the ultimate objective. In my opinion, the process of integrating the three primary financial statements and the associated supporting schedules is one of the best ways to begin cementing these relationships and developing the framework in your mind because the process provides visuals for otherwise abstract concepts. So let's go back to the original question to provide an example. And in this video, we will break it down into two steps. One, how does the purchase of a piece of equipment for $1 million affect the financial statements? And two, how does an increase in depreciation flow through the financial statements? For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to assume a useful life of 10 years and that the purchase is made in cash. And to help us work through these two questions, I've created this template, which has no historical data and will allow us to view these transactions in isolation. So first, let's start with the purchase of equipment. As you may recall, equipment purchases fall under capital expenditures on the PP&E schedule. So we'll input 1 million. And then we can scroll up to see how this flows through the three financial statements. You'll notice that there's no change on the income statement because we are not yet looking at depreciation. Next on the balance sheet, You'll notice that cash is reduced by the amount of the purchase and property plant and equipment or PP&E is increased by the amount of the purchase, which is how the accounting equation remains balanced. Finally, on the cash flow statement, the purchase of equipment appears as a cash outflow under cash flow from investing activities. So now we own the asset and we can go back to look at part two, the impact of the increase in depreciation expense associated with this purchase. To allow us to look at these two items separately, I created a toggle to turn depreciation on or off. So here we'll just turn it on. And we can once again scroll up to look at the impact to the three financial statements. Now on the income statement, Depreciation related to equipment used to manufacture a product will generally fall under cost of goods sold. So the first thing you will note is that COGS increases by $100,000. You also note that this reduces taxable income by $100,000. And if you assume a 20% tax rate, then the tax payment is reduced by $20,000 and net income is reduced by $80,000 which is why depreciation expense is often referred to as a tax shield. Next, we can look at the balance sheet. And here you will note that PP&E is reduced by the amount of depreciation. And that retained earnings is reduced by the change in net income. And we'll describe the change in cash on the cash flow statement below. Here we start at the top with a lower net income, which has been reduced by $80,000. We then add back depreciation expense of $100,000 because it is a non-cash item. This increases cash flow by $20,000, which is why cash on your balance sheet in the same period is now $980,000. In summary, the balance sheet remains balanced because cash, an asset, is increased by $20,000. And property, plant, and equipment, also an asset, is reduced by $100,000.
And finally, retained earnings, which is part of stockholders' equity, is reduced by $80,000. So the accounting equation holds true. And that's just one example of a flow-through question. The notes associated with this video contain quite a few more examples to help you really build this mental framework. Once you've had some time to work through the notes, I would very much recommend the quiz, because ultimately the master exam associated with the Integrating Financial Statements video series will contain a lot of questions that pull from those notes. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.